Hey, what's going on guys? It's Most Remoto, and uh, today I'm on my TW200 and I'm taking a little ride to Katona, New York. It's about 35 minutes away and there's a really nice gravel road over there that uh, butts up against a lake and I was hoping to try and get some good pictures and uh, when I left work about two hours ago, the sun was out, but right now it's not looking as nice, but uh, hopefully we can still get there before uh, sunset. It's like 4.15 right now. Like I said, it takes about 30, 35 minutes to get there. And uh, I believe sunset is around 5.15 or so. So uh, hopefully we can get there in time to take some good pictures. I brought my camera with me, uh, the camera that I got for Christmas. And I've been really trying to kind of get better taking pictures and mess with the settings and stuff like that. And I uh, figured this would be another good opportunity to do that. So one of the things I wanted to talk about on my ride to Katona is uh, the dual sport market in 2021. It's pretty crazy to think that the CRF 250L and uh, the KLX 250 are no longer. Both those brands, uh, Honda and Kawasaki, are getting rid of those bikes and they are replacing them with the CRF 300L and the Kawasaki is replacing theirs with the, I believe it's the KLX 300. And it's cool because it definitely seems like these companies are starting to listen to the uh, consumers and the riders a little bit more when it comes to these dual sports. There's definitely a lot of people out on forums and just videos online saying that the 250cc dual sport, even though it might be totally fine off-road, when you get it on the road, and especially if you're planning on doing any traveling on the highway, it definitely seems like it's a little bit underpowered. So it's cool to see that these companies are listening and they both bumped up the uh, 250 cc's to now 300 cc's and uh, hopefully it'll provide a little bit better uh, road capabilities for both of those bikes. Another interesting thing about these bikes is both the uh, Honda and Kawasaki are lighter than their predecessors. Um, I know that the Honda is significantly lighter and then I think the Kawasaki is just a couple pounds lighter. But uh, the fact that they're both lighter and they still have larger engines is pretty cool and it goes to show the technology and the advancements that are being made in these uh, motorcycles. And another great thing with dual sports is 2020 was a really big year for dual sports. There was a lot of them being sold and whether or not that has to do with the pandemic and you know, maybe people getting into like the apocalyptic survival uh, type feel or vibe, I'm not really sure. But uh, regardless, there's definitely been a spike in sales with dual sports and for the consumers and riders like us, that's really a good thing because uh, it shows these companies, you know, especially the big four that there, uh, there's people out there that really want to see these bikes. They want to see them uh, improved and, you know, made more reliable and given more attention to. You know, not necessarily just the leader bikes and all these bikes that go a million miles an hour. You know, there's a very big dual sport community and uh, it definitely showed in 2020. These people are walking their luggage. Interesting. Huh. And uh, once I hit around 1,000 uh, miles on this bike, I plan on doing kind of like a 1,000 mile review. So uh, definitely look forward to that video. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited to make that. And uh, I think it'll help a lot of people out if they're planning on purchasing a T-Dubs or just if they're in the market for a dual sport in general. So we're just approaching uh, the town of Bedford and this is a really really nice town. It's a pretty cute town actually. They've got a lot of like little shops and uh, restaurants and they've also got like a really nice deli. Um, I'm trying to debate if I should stop there or not. Eh, I'll probably skip it for now. I'm not too hungry. If they're open on uh, my way back maybe I'll pick some up. Bedford 234 if you live in the area that's a great place. There's that deli right there. Or actually, sorry, it's not a deli. It's like a bakery kind of. I don't know what I'm saying, but deli. I know I'm Italian, but geez, easy there.
Wow, that's cool. Hopefully I can pull over on the side over here and maybe take some good pictures. Just trying to find a good spot. I didn't see anywhere to pull over uh, back over there, so I'm just continuing down the road a little bit, seeing if I can uh, get somewhere to pull over. That's the problem with living in an urban environment is everything's all fenced off all the time and uh, it's really hard to get anywhere, especially on a dual sport. But uh, you can still make do. You just gotta kind of figure it out, find your way. We'll pull in here real quick. I just wanna see if this place is open. And I think that this park will allow people in in the winter, but in the summer you have to have like a special pass to get in here. So uh, we'll see if they let me in. I actually pulled over over here and uh, did part of my Wolfman Enduro tank bag review. And I was planning on doing that inside, but they didn't let me in. <laughs> So we'll see if it's any different now. Anyone in here? Nobody is in here. For, for free? Okay. Well, I guess we'll uh, continue on a little bit. Nobody was in that little hut, so... There's no sign saying I can't come in here. <laughs> this is a beautiful little uh, reservation over here. I believe we're in Pound Ridge right now, or maybe it's Cross River. I'm not really sure. I'll make sure to uh, leave it somewhere up there. We will go this way. Looks like someone did some sledding over here. The wildlife office. It's a pretty cool office. Looks more like a barn, but still cool. Ooh. Restricted area. Okay, not going in there. Some old farming equipment. And stuff like this I love uh, doing with the dual sport. You know, even though I own a Ducati, this is definitely dual sport territory. Just getting out and exploring and, uh, I don't know, just taking it slow sometimes. It's nice. Ooh, there's a little waterfall down there. That's really cool. A little turnaround. Maybe a good spot to take some pictures over here. Alright, so this seems like a pretty good spot to take some pictures. Uh, sun's not out anymore, unfortunately, but still pretty good. And a uh, nice little scenic area back here. It says, uh, what does it say here? No entry, sensitive habitat, nesting, and breeding area. Okay, don't worry. Not going in there. Pretty dormant right now. Don't see uh, many birds or any animals or wildlife for that matter, but I'm sure during the uh, summer it's beautiful. All right, so let me get my camera out and uh, I will be right back. All right, so I took a couple pictures and I think I'm gonna head out now, um, but I was just looking on this uh, little website here. This is called gravelmap.com. And if you guys haven't heard of it, definitely uh, check it out. And if you zoom out over here, there's a lot of cool places uh, that kind of just shows you where the gravel and dirt roads are near you. And I'm sure like Colorado has their own special app. Uh, I remember the T-Dubs kid talking about that. But uh, for around where I live in New York and Connecticut area, this is a pretty good option. My friend uh, Rob showed me this and it seems to work pretty well. And uh, you can even like check over here and uh, see that people have posted pictures of it. Which is pretty cool. So uh, we're going to keep on going. We are right over here in the uh, Ward Pound Ridge Reservation. We're gonna head back down that road we just came from, and uh, we're gonna keep going over here on the right. And this is a blue trail, so I'm not really sure if that means it's gravel or what, but uh, we'll definitely check that out and uh, kind of drive the rest of the way through the uh, reservation. Oh, look over there. I see a Bambi over there. It's a little, a couple deer over there. What's that, two of them looks like? Awesome, hello, I know, I know you see me. I see you too. I'm sure they're not enjoying the cold that much. <laughs> All 
All right, so I think we're gonna go right over here. And I believe this is that road, and we'll see where this takes us. Beautiful area over here, they have a lot of land. Nice area to walk, ride your bike. I don't know if these people live here or if they're like property owners or I don't know, landlords or something like that. Maybe they take care of it over here. There's a parking lot over there. I don't know what for. We'll keep going. It doesn't look like there's much over there. Ah, it's just a picnic area. All right, no picnics right now. So that gravelmap.com had this road highlighted in blue and I'm not really sure if that means that they were uh, saying it's a gravel road but uh, if they were and then uh, it's definitely not a gravel road anymore <laughs> so I don't know I'm sure that app uh, or I'm sure that website isn't perfect but uh, it's been pretty good so far they have gone to a couple of the other roads that it had on there and uh, it was spot on with the uh, descriptions so there's a museum over there Definitely closed. Let's see, Pell, Pell Hill, Pell Hill Picnic Area Shelters. Say that fast. Another picnic area over there. People are waving. They love the T-dubs, man, I'm telling you. They love it. Now that the sun's starting to go down, it's definitely a lot colder than it was earlier today. Uh, earlier today at work, it was beautiful. It felt like a little taste of spring, but now it's definitely back down into like the 30s, so. And I definitely notice on longer rides, the uh, the bars being raised a little bit make a huge difference. I don't really like feel as hunched over and I think that helps with my back. Cause I remember when I first had this bike and I would take it on like, you know, like 45 minute or an hour ride, I noticed the uh, lower part of my back would start to kill me. And uh, well, well, that came to a quick stop. No parking anytime, be advised. What does that say? Be advised. Deer management program and process. Hunting is taking place. Ooh, cool. All right, well, I guess that's not a road I can go down, so I'm gonna keep going. Turn around here. So I guess that's where this place ends. I don't know, I can't tell. The house doesn't really look that occupied. <laughs> Standing up feels nice with these handlebars too. But uh, yeah, definitely helps with like how your back feels after uh, a longer ride. Ooh, some slush over here. I took the T-dubs out when it snowed the other day and uh, I mean it it was like what you'd expect. <laughs> it was by no means a good means of uh, driving on snow but it was all right. As you can tell even just on this slush it's pretty slippery. So, pulled over here, take a couple more pictures, get the good old camera. It's not a really great place to put all my uh, gear here, try not to get it too wet, but let's get the camera out first. There she is, there's my beautiful Canon. Really like this camera take some pretty good pictures and uh overall it just seems like a really quality camera i know that canon makes some good stuff put that down there try not to try not to get too wet all right let's see if we can get some good shots 
there's so many different modes on this camera i don't even know where to start right now i'm just in the uh regular mode but you can switch it up top here and it brings you into uh like a special mode i think i know i as you can tell i'm not very good there you go yeah special scene and then this is scene intelligence so it kind of just senses the scene but we'll see if it senses this scene <laughs> All right, so I took a couple pictures with my camera. My GoPro also died, so it was a perfect chance to change the battery. But uh, if you wanna see the pictures, I'll definitely make sure to post some of them on this video. But uh, definitely check me out on Instagram. That's where I post almost all the pictures I take of this bike. And it's also just a really good place to uh, reach out to me if you have any questions or if you wanna talk about anything with the dual sport or anything like that. Um, I'm not perfect with answering right away, but I'll definitely make sure I answer you. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, definitely make sure to reach out. Um, it's at Most Remoto on Instagram. <laughs> Took me a second there, I almost forgot it. It's not that hard. Tried to make a name that wasn't too hard. Mostro in Italian means uh, monster, of course. So, had to name the channel after my Ducati monster. It's a great bike, and uh, I'm definitely a very Italian person, so uh, just a classic name for me. I thought it worked well. And that was before I had my T-dubs, so now that I have my T-dubs, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe I should name it something else. I don't know. I like Most Remoto, though. It's a pretty good name, I think. But uh, anyway, sunset now, so we'll get out of this park. I don't want to be in here uh, after they close it, because that would suck. It's getting cold. So, we'll make sure to get out of here. Nice little bridge. Definitely a beautiful road. You can see the sunset in the background behind the trees. That's awesome. <laughs> cool snowboarders over there. Awesome. Having fun. Enjoying the snow while it's still here. It's pretty cool. Alright, so we're leaving the uh, reservation now, gonna head back. The original plan was to go and take some pictures by this lake, but there's just really nowhere to pull over and get close enough to uh, get some good shots. And I don't want to pull over in the middle of the road. Probably not the best idea. <laughs> Whew, the wind is starting to get chilly now. I'm gonna pull that zipper all the way up. <laughs> Beautiful over there. I wish, like, I wish I could go down there. Problem is, I'd be in this guy's back lawn, and uh, looks like he's got a lot of money. So, definitely don't want to face any lawyers that uh, he has to offer. <laughs> go down this gravel road over here just to see if there's uh, some nice viewing areas. And this gravel road right here, you guys might recognize from my review video. This is one of the first places I brought this bike to uh, do the review. Figured it was a gravel road, you know, better area to do a review for the T-dubs on than the uh, road itself. Because, like I said before, this bike's not really built for the asphalt. <laughs> Seems a lot more bumpy than uh, last time. You know what, I'm going to pull over right over there and take some pictures. Oh yeah. Getting her nice and muddy. I could smell the mud on the, uh, the skid plate and the engine burning up. It's always an interesting smell. <laughs> Alright, let me pull you over here. Make sure you sink into that mud a little bit. And uh, let's take some pictures. Alright, back on the bike. Hopefully got some good shots. I tried with my camera and I was having trouble getting it to focus. 
and uh, then I tried with my iPhone and not gonna lie but it seems like the iPhone pictures almost came out better so I'll have to take a look when I get home on the computer but uh definitely no professional so I wouldn't doubt that because the uh, iPhone camera basically just does everything for you and uh, it really produces some really nice photos and uh, the, the Canon I've been trying to mess with the settings so it's definitely a little bit harder to get that nice crisp shot that you're looking for but anyway we'll continue down this dirt road a little bit like I said earlier this is the road that I uh, had originally done the TW200 review on definitely really bumpy here <laughs> and I remember one of my viewers said to uh, talk less with your hands and uh, try and keep your hands on the handlebars more and uh, he's totally right I, uh, I know I can be a little bit uh, <laughs> handsy when it comes to talking I uh, like I said earlier I'm Italian so I guess it's in my blood to talk with my hands but uh, I've definitely been working on it and uh, I appreciate him taking the time to tell that to me because it wasn't something I really noticed before, but uh, yeah. All right, back on the main road. I'm gonna start heading home now. It's starting to get a little bit later. Sun's starting to come down. And just testing out the rigids. Still working nice. Kind of harder to tell. It's still a little light out, but they do help. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just wanted to get the T-dubs out, warm her up, give her some exercise. It's been really cold recently and with all the snow, it's been tough to ride. But um, I was happy I'm able to take her out today and uh, hopefully the video came out good. If you guys like this type of video, please give it a thumbs up. That really lets me know that I'm doing a good job and uh, what I'm doing is something you guys enjoy. And if you have any comments or questions, you can leave it in the comment section below or on my Instagram. And if you're new to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I try and post once a week, and uh, if not, it's every other week. And uh, anything with T-Dogs or Dual Sports is going to be on this channel. So if you like that type of stuff, please stick around. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and ride safe.